new students or new residents uh, who are who have taken up orthopedics uh, as a profession they have decided to pursue orthopedics as a profession and they are going to enter the at the at the bottom rung of the profession uh well i assure all of you that probably you have made the right choice when i was uh, in your position and i had uh, to appear for the entrance test we had to give a choice so my first choice was general surgery and the second first choice was orthopedic surgery and the second one was general surgery uh so it means that i was very clear in my mind that it has to be a surgical specialty for me and i'm sure all of you who have opted for orthopedics are very clear in their mind that they want to pursue not only a surgical specialty but out of the surgical specialties orthopedic surgery well uh this talk which i have put together is to make you aware of the special circumstances in which you will have to start working in your various institutions and this is something which is new for all of us not only the students but also the teaching faculty because we have never seen circumstances like this at least not me in my 40 odd years of teaching experience uh well it is said that if you want to succeed in life then you have to adapt to the changing scenario which is going to be a part of life for all of us this lesson has been learned time and again in warm war time situations and management principles in the civil society have all been borrowed from war time experiences and there is no better theater for a changing scenario but for the war time situations any leader or any general or any commanding officer commanding a war scenario will only be successful if he can repulse the attack of the enemy if the enemy an enemy attacks from a position from which the attack was never anticipated so this is the changing scenario to which the all of us must adapt ourselves to uh, to to respond in real life situations well what has happened now is so this is what i have been telling you that success depends on one's ability to adapt to the changing situation whether it is in war whether it is in sports it could be in education or any other field of life and today now this changing scenario which has happened with resident training is this covid 19 situation which has developed and it has lasted a little too much for over two years we have seen disruption of resident training programs but the response the residents and teachers responded to this changing scenario by the emergence of online training but remember this online training though it was a substitute to physical training which probably is the gold standard there is no better training in orthopedics than offline or actual hands on training but in the absence of that there was no other way but 
to go in for online teaching programs and new platforms emerged and they were able to at least have some continuity in the training program. But remember, this sort of a training program lacks in hands-on experience, which is extremely important in medical specialties, more so in orthopedics. There was a delay in the NEET exam. There was a delay, further delay in the declaration of the results, resulting in almost a one year being lost. And now finally the admissions are happening. Along with this, there has been a redeployment of orthopedic residents for the last two years. Meaning thereby the senior residents have not been able to teach the junior residents. So the new postgraduates who come in would be, would be a sort of learning bedside procedures all over again, or for the first time, because even as interns, there has not been much of training by the senior residents or the junior residents because of the simple reason that they were not doing orthopedic work, majority of them, they were redeployed or deployed in ICUs, in COVID facilities and so on. And along with this, the double whammy is that the next fresh batch of postgraduates, which joins a year later, usually would be joining very soon now in the next three to four months time. So what is going to happen is there has, is going to be a sudden increase in the number of residents, which is over the years has already been very high. To give you an example, when I did my post-graduation, there used to be only four postgraduate streets in Subdivision Hospital, only three in Malanazad Medical College. And today we have 15 postgraduate seats in every year in Malanazad Medical College. So there has been a five-fold increase, and I do not think the number of patients or the number of operating, operating uh, sessions has increased commensurate with the number of residents. And as I said, two batches coming in simultaneously, almost simultaneously, there is going to be a traffic jam. And again, I have borrowed this photograph to depict the plight of the teaching program. This is a very famous photograph which has been shot by a, a Nepalese climber by the name of Nirmal Purja, uh, fondly known as Nims Purja. And he took this photograph. This is the Everest peak, just short of the Everest peak. He took this photograph showing that there is a phenomenal number of climbers waiting to summit the Everest. And this is going to be the situation of our residents. But what this Nims Purja, the Nepalese climber, uh, he is living in that habitat. And for all of you who are interested in knowing further about this man, he's a phenomenal young man who has done something which no climber has ever done. This is depicted in a Netflix movie called 14 Peaks. He's the only climber in the world who was able to climb all the 14 over 8,000 meter peaks in one climbing season. The last one who did it, he was a climber who did it in eight years. And this man, along with his team of Sherpas, he also belongs to the Sherpa community. He was able to do this phenomenal feat. So what I am trying to impress upon you or by showing this photograph is that the, the residents are going to be in a similar situation and the option available to Nirmal Purja's team was either to wait for their turn or to have the ability to overtake and reach the peak earlier than those waiting for. 
So since he was an exceptional climber along with an exceptional team, he was able to overtake all these people or majority of them summit the Everest and come down in a, in a much faster time. And that is what all these residents are